Uh, last time I showed a little bit of the process for um, the primary shapes when I when I design. Um, so I talked a little bit about design, that sort of stuff. Um, this time I'm going to jump straight into uh, the treaty uh, since uh, yeah, since I just want to not too much like repeat myself. I mean, I'll, I always going to end up repeating myself, but I'm just saying that, uh, yeah, going to treaty straight away might be a good thing. So, uh, um, still, I just want to go like and show you like what I did. Um, ah, there you go. <laughs> Here's the alerts. They work. Woo. Um, all right. So, uh, the, the character here, uh, last time I just showed a little bit of like how I designed it and, uh, hello. Um, so yeah, doing good, doing good. And you, <laughs> um, so yeah, the, um, uh, last time I showed a little bit of, uh, like some, uh, shape language that I did on the character and, um, while, uh, since last week, I had the chance to work maybe um, like a day or two on the character. So uh, I didn't have really a chance to do much, but I, I got rid of some, um, maybe some, some more like tedious stuff. Um, I'm still going to repeat it at some point, but um, it's just to show uh, that, okay, for example, if I... Okay, so if you look at like everything that's uh, okay, so what's blue right now is what's still um, the blocking, and uh, what is in color is actually the uh, high res pieces, like the, the the final final model, final meshes. Uh, so I concentrated on the the bottom here, and I just want to go a little bit like over. Uh, what I did. So, uh, hello. Hello, Azraf. All right. Good, and you, man? So, yeah, like I said, I actually uh, finished... Um, the the boots and one of the reason why I finished uh, here it was just to have like some part of the character that I can say like hey that's where I'm going with that and um, doing this piece of the character pretty much means then the rest of the character is going to be a little bit of a rinse and repeat of uh, of this so um, just to show you uh, well. A little bit all, all over the model, I added some uh, IMMs. Uh, so there's, I created myself um, two, like, oops, oh, maybe not this one. Let me show you it. Um, eh, whatever. So if you ignore the, the knee part, uh, like this part here with the, the little uh, blade thing, uh, this is... I created myself uh, one instance of uh, this IMM, and I pretty much put it everywhere. Like you have it uh, here, over the um, over the feet, and um, here, this place here around the the rib right here. It's pretty much uh, and here, yeah. It's pretty much everywhere that I um, I had put it at first on the model. If I go back on, uh, see, I kept a layer. I don't have the, 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 the original colors anymore, but um, you can see that like here or here, I plan to have those little like uh, extrusions. And that's pretty much where I put uh, where I put them. So you see, just adding those, uh, those little things here and there. Um, adding those, they're from uh, the, uh, my previous model I just reuse this IMM because I like to have some uh, echoing between the characters. Oops, this one's supposed to have dynamic subdivision. There you go. And uh, yeah, so you, as you can see, it's pretty much just like reusing, placing some, some IMMs. Um, this kind of like cylinder piece here was repeated on uh, many parts of the character. It's actually from another 
uh, another model. So that's what I mean. Like the boring part is I, I pretty much took some some IMMs that I created from before, and I just placed them on the character where I knew that I was going to have like a little like detail here and there. Um, and also same thing for the joints. I'm pretty I pretty much just like reuse an IM an old IMM that I did. Uh, so it looks pretty complex. It's actually like four four meshes on top of each other. <laughs> like like for example, like you see like this is just like one part of the model and when you add on top of it we just created like some something. Um yeah, I I use often a Zen modeler to do um like cylinders like this. Like any like mesh that is made from a pri primitive um, that is that looks like a primitive shape. Often I'll use a IMM to to model them. Same with like this guy here, was made with IMM and IMM. Uh, sorry, with was made with the Zen modeler. Same thing with that thing here, that sort of stuff. This one, uh, since it's a little bit more sculpted, this is just like a a simple mesh though. And uh, the foot is actually made of um, some separated meshes. So th these these meshes are were made a bit more like uh, the old schooled way. Um, I just take a mesh and I polish it by hand. There's no like panel loops or that sort of stuff. It's pretty much just like sculpting the shape, making it look uh, look somewhat clean. Like the goal is that if I actually remove the poly paint, use maybe like the metal material, that it looks somewhat clean. Sometimes it's not like perfectly clean, but at least like just that it gives like somewhat the impression, especially if it's viewed from afar. Because like this is the foot, right? You don't want to put too much time, you don't want to spend too much time on the foot because it's not going to be the part that's really going to be focused on, right? So, yeah. Uh, what's the base of those items? Yeah, uh, well, I man, the uh, IMM is a insert multi mesh. Basically, what it is, it's um, let's say uh, okay, for like those guys here, those little like buttons here, they're placed all over the models, and uh, you don't want to always like move them. You want to be able to make them like pop wherever you want. So you have like lists of like IMM. Sometimes you can make them yourself. Sometimes you just like grab them. Uh, there's some that comes like by default with uh, ZBrush. So like, let's say I take like this guy here. Well, I can actually like just place like a bolt here, bolt here, a bolt here. So I pretty much choose like the size and the placement, that sort of stuff. So uh, that's uh, what you call the, an IMM. It's it, it's basically like kind of like synonym of like kid bashing uh, small parts. Um, like this uh, joint here is also like a the same idea of like kid bashing, taking an object that already exists, just placing it there. You don't want to always like, like do like joints from scratch. Sometimes there's like meshes that like I try to uh, reuse because it's just like really fucking boring to just like do them, do new ones every time. Plus like this is such like a small part of the character and a non, it's not really like what makes the design. It's more like a, like a, a, a liminal mesh like a mesh between important things so uh yeah that's the, pretty much the mentality here like this is a uh, same idea like there's uh, those are just like imms that i place there so uh yeah that's the idea and uh so yeah just so to say that the foot here is pretty much like a mesh that i created and sculpted myself which is like basically the point of like what i want to show in my streams same thing for like the little toes here. Um, the cloth was pretty much um, like made from an extrusion. I'll re-show by this same technique when I'm going to go on uh, the gloves here. And uh, yeah, the muscles, the muscles is pretty much uh, just like you make one muscle fiber, let's call it, muscle section. And it's just a matter of like placing them one by one super boring but hey you know what looks cool at the end i actually probably have like a piece here no is it here no those are just like orthographic pieces that i created and placed you see like that's the uh the piece that i made that i reuse everywhere 
it's just tempor temporarily placed there. But uh, no, my, my synthetic muscle, yeah, it's right here. I put it in a different uh, Z tool. So you see, that's what it is. So I took this guy here, it's just a cylinder. With Z modeler, I just made like that little cavity there. Made those out of extrusions. And the little X here are basically created with nano mesh. It's just a, a X shape. I always uh, keep it in a... Whoop. Yeah, it's just a little X shape like this that I place with nano mesh. And then you have like this muscle compila compilation here. Take it, place it everywhere, anywhere you want. So that's what I did for the, the muscles here. And, uh, oh, yeah, also ball joint here. Just reused a ball joint that I made from another model. So, yeah, there you go. Not more complicated than that for the moment. So, basically, like, where I would go from from there for today is probably just, like, finishing the, uh, the leg part here. That's a pretty complicated piece. If I just, like, talk about, like, this section of the leg that remains this section here so uh, yeah I'll just like jump into it anyway like I have pretty much figured out that the point of those uh, streams is going to be just to like work while relaxing answering questions once in a while but really taking it chill basically uh, kind of like trying to um, get some people to sculpt uh, alongside while I uh, I stream those things so uh, yeah and there you go new follower Woo! <laughs> thanks that's appreciated <laughs> yeah well man you always say that All right, let's jump into it. So basically the first part of doing this is pro is going to be to separate the um, this section into the amount of like meshes I wanna work with. So the way that I'm seeing that is um, probably what I'll do is uh, I'll probably have this part be a separate mesh probably it's going to end up being like uh, an IMM I'm just gonna take some random like capsule shape cylinder shape I'm gonna place there that's often what I do when I have like a primitive shape on my model uh, this part here is going to be probably separated and uh, this here is going to be a separate mesh of its own probably up to here and then this entire piece will probably be uh, part of the same mesh, even up to the, the back here, I think. Yeah, I can always like add like a separation somewhere. We'll see, I'll, I'll think about it. Uh, one thing that I wanna do though, uh, before I, st I start um, sculpting on it, um, yeah, there you go. That, like Alex said, that's what I'm hoping people will do. Sculpt alongside with me. <laughs> uh, if I find it hard to be productive while streaming, uh, extremely yes. <laughs> I mean, I work like easily like five, six times faster when I when I don't talk or look around the model. But I kind of like. I think I came to peace with uh, with that. Um, since I reflected on my last stream and I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm never going to be able to work as fast if I'm like, uh, if I do it that way, but it's not really the point. To, it's, I'm not here to show like my speed and that sort of stuff. I'm more here to just like chill and uh, show some stuff. Right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. 
So yeah, um, what I'll do here is uh, like this section here is supposed to be like kind of like a planar shape. And I think that what I want to do is I, I kind of like want to put like a placeholder there to make sure that this actually like stays sharp like this. Uh, not sharp, but a uh, planar. So I'll actually introduce um, still part of the leg. So let's go in the leg folder. Uh, I will actually go in uh, those are the primitives here. Cylinder. Transform that into a three-sided cylinder, which we call a triangle. And I'll go and uh, insert this triangle in my scene here. There we go. Um, all right, so let's turn that guy 180 degrees like this. And I'll just go and place it here. It's gonna be roughly good. I'm gonna give it like the shape. And you know what? I might actually use this primitive to create the mesh around it as well. Yeah, there we go. All right, and from there, from there, I'm going to go in Z modeler, Z modeler. Right now, I'm just in the insert mode. Basically, just I'm gonna just erase these edges. I think uh, it's going to be more complicated than I that I want if I start to uh, play around with the uh, the Z modeler like this. So I might just go brute force by hand instead. I mean, at least I have like this kind of like placeholder here to know if uh, my shape is flat. So uh, yeah, I'll just use it as a placeholder after all. I'll keep it up here. I will make it disappear for the moment and I'll start splitting uh, this mesh. So I guess that the first thing I'm going to do is just uh, separate the entire uh, leg piece. So I will duplicate this mesh here. I will hide the master shape. I will put that shape in my leg subfolder. And uh, is there any layers? Yes, I will crush the layers. I will destroy all my subdivisions. Start erasing part of the mesh that I don't need to use. There we go. Everything is going to go white. Oops. There we go. And I'll use poly paint with a darker color just to draw where I want the separation. It's going to be simple. I'm just going to go inside here. Well, 
once the, the line is uh, drawn, I'll just uh, mask by intensity and hide, oops, sorry, reverse my mask and then hide what was selected. So now I get those separated pieces. And if I do auto group, you see like they're separated. So there you go. So I'll just keep the um, this side here and I'll delete what is hidden. So now I have this piece, which is going to be what I'm going to be working with. Uh, I'll go back to my master here. And um, for my, my master, I will simply create a layer, uh, mask lasso, the section Oops, I overdid it. Yeah, I should be fine. All right, I'll simply go and uh, smooth everything here. I'll lower my subdivision so the smoothing is stronger and I'll change it for smooth stronger also. See, smooth stronger here. You can find that in the light box. So now that I crushed this um, part here, I'll go back on my higher subdivision levels, get rid of that also, push a little bit more here. Ah, oh, guys, today I lost, I think, two hours and a half of work because I kept skipping the autosave because I was impatient and uh, ZBrush crashed without saving. And I lost two hours and a half of work, and uh, that was not a good Christmas gift. Oh boy, oh, oh, Marco was not happy. I was not, not happy. Oh boy, I think we all have the same story at some point, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I think you guys can feel me. Yeah, 15 minutes wouldn't be, wouldn't be bad. The real thing I should actually do is just let it autosave and not be impatient because it's actually a really cool feature that they added. It's really me that, ah, that's the problem here. <laughs> yeah, anyways. So um, at this point here, I, I can actually like mirror and mirror and, and weld if I want to work on like both sides at the same time. But I think I, I'll actually work on the... Um, I'll actually work on uh, one side at what's one side at a time, and you know what I can do? Actually, I just realized that I maybe when I, I went too fast, um, I'll actually keep part. I'll, I'll actually keep the left, uh, the, the the right leg intact for the moment. So I'll record a a save state. I'll go back in this layer here, and um, oops, remove symmetry. And I'll morph with morph brush. I'll morph this shape back here. So this way I always have like the blocking on the right and my uh, what's going to be my polished model on the left here. There we go. Yeah, I, I heard I heard that blender was was really great. Like I really wish that I knew more about it and stuff, and I really encourage people to 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 know how like to learn to use it because it really looks promising. Plus, it's like much cheaper than uh, Autodesk. Yeah, that's for sure. My render choice, uh, I like to render with ZBrush uh, just for the simplicity of it and the fact that it makes me train my eye to what I want to add in the render because it's really based on like how you compile it. Uh, otherwise I like uh, Keyshot for robots. It's pretty, it's pretty simple. Plus I already have all my materials uh, ready. So, and I pretty much use often the same lighting. So uh, 
Yeah, it's another cool option. All right, so like now this guy here, what I'll do is I will uh, I will do another separation. So this time, what I will do is not only separate like the part I'm going to be working on, but I will actually create like what will be the, my working piece. Um, it's not going to be a piece with a panel, so um, you'll see me use my old school uh, rough and dirty technique quick and quick and dirty technique I like to, to say that I have two uh, methods of working uh, one is uh, where I separate all the pieces create panels like thicknesses and then I polish the panels and stuff and there's this other technique um, that I use, which is pretty much to, um, which is pretty much to just like create like a block on which I'm going to work. I'm just going to hide the arms here for a second. So yeah. This time I'm going to work on the uh, this kind of like rough mesh that I'm talking about. Uh, what's interesting about the uh, the rough mesh is that it really requires you to really understand the, the how the brush works in order to create uh, the effect that you're looking for whereas like when you're using the the panel loop technique um, it's much more uh, technical and um, technical is not bad right but uh, you rely more on like a certain like technique or methodology Whereas uh, the other technique, you really have to make sure that like your polish, you polish the mesh well. So you see, I'm just gonna go like under the material here. And you know what? I'm, and I'm gonna split it right here. There we go. Um, this piece I'm going to make in one piece, I think. Yeah, one big piece. I think maybe I'm going to separate it maybe here just for uh, simplicity's sake. I'm going to create another piece right here like this. Hmm. Come to think of it, uh, Yep, I think that's how I'm going to proceed. This I won't need. There's a bit of a cleanup here at the same time. I see my kid waking up. Oh, he seems to be falling back asleep. Alright. Yep. 
after thought after thinking about it I think I'm going to actually separate this piece also like this here okay I think that's going to be good this is, looks this looks like long and tedious but it's actually a pretty important uh, part it's just making good separations all right all right all right all right so let's separate like this I'm going to duplicate keep this and back up just in case uh, mask what is uh, masked by intensity so it masks what is uh, darker invert selection and hide what is visible and now I will auto group this so I'll have like those pieces here and then what I do after is uh, I'll just like expand uh, a bit of the mask on certain parts here I know there's a feature it's called polygroup it that does that I kind of like to uh, do it by hand just to have some agency on uh, on these oh why this oh this part didn't, didn't connect here uh, you know what I'll do for this I'll actually mask lasso remove auto group yeah, you see it's two two separate ones now Baby seems okay. Thanks for following. All right, let's go with that. Alright, so now all of those should actually be good for uh, to be my 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 main pieces. I'll get rid of like the pieces that are pretty much leftovers. This one I actually I will get rid of because, like I said, I'm just going to use some like capsule shape IMM there. All right. All pieces are accounted for, so everything is deleted. So now these will all become. Um, yeah, I try to keep them watertight, but um, if I look at, for example, uh, this character here, yeah, that's our watertight mesh. Actually, is it? Yeah, it is. But you'll see sometimes, like um, some some mesh are not. Is this one watertight? Yeah, this one's also. But like, uh, to be honest, like sometimes they're not really watertight. But I just try to make sure that the um, the part that's open is really like inside another mesh, another mesh that this mesh might be watertight. This way, when you like boolean everything, it just pretty much like makes it watertight anyway. Or if you were to make like a closed hole, it would make like a mess basically. So um, actually, you know what? This piece here might actually be a panel loop. Yeah, I think so. I'll separate it into another object and I'll start to just like give my pieces like thicknesses and stuff like that. Oops, kind of like deleted part of it by accident. I'll just find a better angle. Yeah, there we go, that's good. No problem. It would actually would probably be better if I just place like the IMM there right away so I actually know what to work around. Uh, oh yeah, which is actually, this is a pretty good tip. Um, 
I, I said it during the last stream, but I really like to place my joints first so I know what to work around. So while I was actually placing this uh, knee joint here, well, it helped me to place everything around it correctly, like this like plastic thing or how I will actually like place this metal thing. And also a reminder that I always used um, this like rectangular mesh here to kind of like act like the uh, the plane that dictates the alignment for the entire leg, or at least like what's around the knee part, which is what I find is the most important. And it's not perfect, but it's still like a good uh, gauge. Try to making things like somewhat parallel to that line here. It's gonna help later with the formation and uh, making the pose. Yeah. Mm-hmm, exactly. Yep. So uh, should I go and place the IMM now? Uh, to be honest, uh, probably, I can probably do it. Um, is there something I can grab real quick? So I don't waste too much time. I'm actually looking at my other models, my old models here, try to see if there's not like something I can just grab real quick. Uh, I think I have the perfect piece also. I'll go here on the arm part. Bingo, this guy. Am I going to need also the little thing on top here? Hmm. Let's just grab it for the moment. All right. Insert this guy. I'm already going to put it all green. Oops. I'll place the gizmo in the middle because like this, he's already pretty much like an orthographic view. So by locking the gizmo now, I actually can benefit from having it kind of like straight already. Well, not straight, but have the gizmo be, uh, All right, I think that looks like a good alignment for it. It's now I'll try to try to place it somewhat aligned with the other IMM that's on top, the other mesh that's on top. All right, that should be good for the moment. Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. 
So it's pretty noisy for the moment, so I'll actually just uh, remove some parts of it just so it's a little less noisy. I think I will actually remove those here. Maybe not the top one. I can probably like make like a cable going in the leg here. It's just gonna add to the visual language of uh, of my piece. So yeah, that would be uh, that would be good. So I'll do this. I'll erase this part. Reconstruct subdivisions. There we go. I'll even take this here and elongate it even more, just to up to here like this. There we go. like this and I will rotate this guy here so he looks a little bit more aligned with the new mesh there we go good enough for rock and roll this is what you say of a guitar that is not tuned perfectly, but it doesn't matter because we're playing rock and roll and not classical. <laughs> All right, and the rest, you see like how it's like clipping inside of the mesh, it's not really aesthetic. I can probably just add like cavity lines later. So, uh, yeah. And uh, I'll get rid of like this little detail here because it's kind of like a bit too close to the mesh. I find it a bit distracting. This one is also maybe a bit distracting. Um, so like I'll just remove like this little detail here. I'll just use my planar brush. I actually like to use this like small alpha when I do like planar stuff like this. Just filling the hole with planar tool. Then using H polish really softly and then smooth relax. Boom, the details have disappeared. If I had a layer, I would have made them disappear on a layer. So I'm gonna use Orb Crack now, which is basically damn standard, but a little bit more like angular. See, added a cavity line here. Boom, right there. And it just creates the illusion that it actually goes inside of the mesh correctly. And here on this mesh, I'll add a very simple alpha, which is my default alpha of this brush, just to create some like inset for this detail right here. Not more complicated than that. You just have to align it well. Eh, close enough for rock and roll. There we go. There you go. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. That's good. That's good. You see, it's like this is a neatly placed IMM. Perfect. So now I'll just place the cable here. Um, Hmm, I don't know if I got rid of the uh, the other thing too quickly. Thanks for the follow-up. Actually, I think I got rid of that too quickly, the little thing that was uh, at the tip here. I'll just duplicate that mesh, go back in my old one and undo. Yeah, you see? I'll go back before I deleted it. And if I... Yeah, it's still aligned with it, so that's good. I'll give it like a gray material like this. I don't think I'm going to place the cable. I think it's going to look a little bit too weird. I'll simply like make sure that this piece actually works well with that part. Blending it correctly. And I'll get rid of this thing right there. Ah, 
All right, not bad, not bad at all. Okay. There we go. Well, it's really how you use it as well, because it's really the smoothing that I do at the end that works well, but it's just planar with that brush here. I like the tightness of this alpha here. And when you just like use it on the side here, you see it creates like choppiness here, but if you just like smooth relax it, without going without like going too far it actually like works pretty well so it's really the smoothing that comes after that's uh the magic of it and it, like there's still like some some little like detail artifact here but you're never gonna see that so like who gives a f why am i censoring myself who gives a shit there you go who gives a fuck yeah bad words cussing all right that's cool <laughs> and what I'll do is I'll actually merge these two uh, subtools now, just because I I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to move this these piece together at some point soon. So I'll just like bring it up here. This one is the one that has the the gizmo, so I'm actually going to. Is there layers? Okay, I'm gonna merge them. Reconstruct subdivision. All right, there we go. I'm actually gonna mirror it. So I deleted the subdivision once again. Mirror, mirror and weld, and reconstruct subdivisions. Yeah, this is a real mature stream. <laughs> All right, you know what? At this point, I think I'll go back on the uh, the mesh that I previously placed here, and actually, I'm going to try to use this piece as like my. Um... Oops, went too far. So basically like this, oops, this piece here, I'm going to try to create it out of this one here. Like what I was hoping to do is kind of like rounding the edges uh, with like smoothing. So, but it's kind of like hard to like add uh, inserts like uh, loops here right now i'll just see how it does when you smooth it so if i actually i'm going to activate dyna dynamic subdivision so it smooths like this for sure but i'm just going to crease like i want like this one to stay hard this one to stay hard and the rest can round so i'll attribute it the same poly group everywhere and when i dynamic subdivision but add creases Crease, poly, uh, crease polygroups, it kind of like retains the hard edges. And I'll just play with my crease level here. Mm, no, see, it's not keeping, keeping it uh, straight like I want. So I'll go into a Z modeler and uh, try to see if I can actually like get a bit of the shape by adding loops. And uh, yeah, I yeah, get kind of close to what I want to do, but I think I would need to kind of like bevel this edge and it's it gets complicated. I, I really don't like to do those kind of like, those kind of things. Uh, it's, ugh, I hate doing polymodeling. Yeah, well, that's what I did, the flat subdivisions. Uh, or at least uh, that's what I, I did with the creasing. Um, so, yeah, I think I, I will not have, I will actually have to do like this here. You see, it's kind of like near to the shape that I, the, of what I want. 
I really just think that I really need to bevel this thing, but I know it's going to go like uh, cross sides and uh, yeah, you see it's going to go only on one side. Maybe if I just like mask this part here. So you, you see, this is actually me figuring stuff out. <laughs> okay, I need to add my crease back. Crease poly group. Yeah, I see it creates like that thing. So you know what? At this point, because it's starting to piss me off, I think I'll just go by hand. And go by hand basically means that I'm going to have to uh, just be somewhat careful. Actually, you know what? That's kind of like since I kept my gizmo. Oh, there you go. That's like exactly what I wanted to do. All right, so we quickly were able to get this mesh to work. Yay! Well, now here it's not rounded, but if I remove the creases, boop, and boop, there we go. Ah, lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Perf. Yeah, boy. <laughs> yeah, it was a bit uh, Quebecois. Yeah, boy, yes. <laughs> For those who don't know, I come from Montreal. And um, my first language is uh, my is uh, French, but not French from France. French from Quebec. It's a very particular kind of French. I love it. All right. So you see, like now I have like the flatness of this piece. It's really like I rarely do this for for meshes but i think that this is actually going to work uh pretty well in that case uh and i'll build the rest around this so like the fact that i have this mesh that is flat uh like this it'll help me to construct things around it and since like this is like this was made very clean everything that i construct around it if i align it to this well well then it means that like it, it, it will give more the illusion that everything is actually really uh straight and everything so it's going to help me in the long run uh yeah 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 so let's keep it like that for the moment like this is not a mesh that i'll be able to sculpt on it so i'll probably have to like z remesh it uh later but uh, i'll keep it there as a placeholder for the moment and i'll work on the other meshes so let's go to this one here oops Let's not lose this. There we go. And you know what? I'll place right now like the IMM that's going to go at the tip here. So uh, probably on the, the arm of this guy I have. Well, you see, there we go, this one. I'm simply going to reuse this IMM that I've... Uh, that I reused all over uh, all of the uh, insectoids. Oops, there we go. It's not, uh, the gizmo is not really well placed, so I can also just place it uh, with the old school transition line. Not transition, but uh, what's the name again? My brain is mush right now. It's not the transition line, it's the transpose. Thank you. There we go. It's just going to rest here for a moment. Oops. Let's save this. Yep, 
Yeah, well, it's um, it actually helps me to this, this recycling helps me in many ways. To be honest, it helps me to save time. It also helps me to keep things kind of like consistent between uh, characters, especially if they're part of the same group. So it's kind of like a it serves like many purposes. Uh, I really like doing that. All right, so now I'm going to place this guy here. Um, I'm going to separate it. There we go. I think that this mesh here, I won't need it anymore, so I'll simply delete it. Try to keep a clean scene. All right, so this guy here, this guy. I think this guy I'm going to, um, I'm going to make a panel out of this. Kind of looks looks like a panel, so uh, yep, panel it is. My first panel, panel loop on Twitch. This is a big one. <laughs> yeah, consistency. I also call it echoing, so that like details like echo like details like details can echo on the character. Like for example, like just look at like those little like orange hook. They kind of like echo echo on the character in the like calculated areas it kind of like helps to have the the eye go, go all over the model like it sees that detail like up here and it kind of like makes him look at the same detail somewhere else it's just a way to like add composition on a character so before i um before i create the the panel out of this I'll just make sure it's a bit cleaner. So I'll subdivide the mesh and I will actually, since it's going to be a panel, I'll need to make sure that my, um, the uh, extremities, not the extremities, but the, uh, the contour of the mesh is well calculated. So you see here, there's like going to be like a gray edge, to this, uh, this thing here. So, uh, yeah, actually, I'll make my line right here instead. Doing this, this, this is going to be the contour. And here, I'm not going to remove it, but I'm going to actually make this a hard edge. So, um, oops. yeah. So I'll, I'll note it. Yeah, like this. There we go. I'll cut it here. All right, that should be good. So now, uh, same as before, mask by intensity, invert mask, hide what is hidden, and attribute new polygroups. I'll take this, I'll grow it a little bit. That should be fine. I will assign it its own polygroup. And uh, you still want this piece here that I will grow. And this will be kind of like the center. Oops. Uh, wait, what is it going to look like on this side? This is going to be in a thickness. Okay, so I'll want this mesh to stop here, approximately. There we go. All right. So if I grab this guy here, this one and this one. Oops, this, those needs to be separated. Okay, this guy, this guy and this guy. There you go. Now I have a, like a more calculated mesh. So that should be good like this. So I'll delete what's hidden. And uh, I will actually just move the mesh a little bit 
to align it to align its edge correctly. I'll use them standard, kind of like to insist on the cavity. That's that's um, right here, the separation of polygroups. I'll, this is going to be much cleaner later. This is just for like some temporary visualization. How do you make that color brush strong, like hard stroke? Uh, well, I don't know. It's just a standard brush with uh, RBG, and when it's at max intensity, it's really really sharp. When you draw. It's just this. It's it's really the standard brush. Uh, nothing, nothing, nothing particular. All right. So this mesh here, you know what? I'm just gonna remove the wireframe for a sec. So you see, like this mesh here, like this. I'm just gonna give it. It's uh, more of like the shape that I'm looking for. So you see how it's not like aligned. All the line here is not really aligned with uh, this triangular shape that I that I know that is well, uh, that is clean. Let's say. So I will actually use the triangle as kind of like a a placeholder to make sure that the rest is uh, clean. And you see how like I made like a curve here, and this here is more like a straight line. Uh, actually, like this. I will probably make this like rounded on the edges. I can probably do it now actually, instead of like just like keeping it for later. Uh, so what I'll do actually is probably I'm going to try to keep keep this shape and kind of like tell him to Z remesh while keeping the shape correct. So I'll just like clone it into a different Z tool for a second. I will apply the dynamic subdivision so it becomes a real subdivision. Uh, before doing that, I'm going to augment my crease to maximum. And I, I'm, I'm going to ask it to Z remesh and keep like these hard edges here. So Z remesh and you, you, you click on keep groups. Let's go 1000 polygroups, Z remesh. You see, that's a, it's pretty good. So that will probably be like the real mesh I'm going to be working on. Uh, let's uh, let's give it a shot. Insert you here and uh, green color. Hide the old one, and if I actually do not add any creases and I just smooth it. So you see, just because of its topology, that's how it smooths, that's how it actually does like a round corner. It's actually pretty good. It's pretty good. It's not as soft as I would want it to be. Um, what I can try is just try to have a lower topology. So I can just like step, go back here on this step, and as, instead of like a thousand, I can go for like 0.4 thousands, so 400, Z remesh. And you see the topology is actually like uh, less um, tight. So if I actually just like smooth it, it actually smooths on a less of a sharp curve compared to this one. You see how like they don't have the same like sharpness? I think I'm actually going to go for for the, this one here. Yeah, yeah, I think I'm going to do that. All right, I'm going to place a triangle here. Smooth it. There we go. See, it's rounder. I prefer it like this. Something else that I could have done is just manipulate, create an inset inside, and uh, so yeah, I'll just uh, see some a lot of question popping actually. Yeah. 
<laughs> Good night. Good night, dude. Tiago. <laughs> A good one. Good night. All right. So you see, I have those different different thicknesses. I won't delete the other uh, meshes for the moment, because what I want is I want to be able to also like add like details, like trim lines and stuff on that mesh. And uh, I think I'm going to probably um, sharpen the corners by adding adding details. Because, like, for example, if I add, like, an inset inside here. Oops. Let's try uh, standard. Like, just adding that inset actually made the corner a little bit thicker. But if I mask this part and I lift it like this, I kind of, like, get more roundness. See, like, how the corner gets rounder? So that's actually what I was... That, uh, that's what I wanted, to be honest. So uh, I'll keep this, and I'll just push that mesh inside here. So now I have the right roundness for where I'm going. What I'm going for, I mean. So that's cool. There we go. So this mesh pretty much has like what I'm looking for in it. I could actually start to polish this piece now. This is pretty much like the final state of that piece. I'm just gonna have to play around with like this shape here because it's a bit on the uh, on the uh, outsides there. But like I'm going to undo what I'm doing right now. But just to show you how quick it can go, if you just take a trim hole and you just target it to be in the center here and use out, you can actually have like this coming out like this. It's pretty fast. And uh, planar cut, you can you see like this. So this is actually going to fit well later. I just have to align the stuff a little bit. But uh, before I actually uh, apply these dynamic subdivisions into real subdivisions, subdivisions, I might actually just want to um, just polish the pieces around it. See if I need to do more manipulations first. So uh, back to this piece here. Like this one is a piece that's going to be really important that I apply myself to correctly because it's uh, somewhat of an, a major piece, I'd say. It's, al it's also pretty complex. The shape is complex, so uh, I don't want to rush it too much. The, the sides are all jagged, but uh, it doesn't worry me for the moment. Uh, H polish a bit. I'm gonna make those a bit planar. So you see to keep to keep the roundness. If I'm too hard with H polish, I'm actually going to make it like uh, straight. But if I use H polish and make the strokes in that direction. I kind of like chamfer the shape a bit. It, it stays a uh, hard surface. So what I will want to do now is kind of like make sure that like this stays around here, but I, I kind of like, I want to create kind of like a plane where like this is like plan R and then it starts to curve like this. The idea would be that it's similar here. So um, for the moment, I'll simply try to make it by hand by doing this here. Or hmm, maybe I should just try to clip it. Hmm. Yeah, that could work. I 
and I'll use a smooth so smooth brush. So like now I know that there's kind of like a plane here and then it goes around. I think it, it's going to work. And the way that the light is kind of like shining on the, the planes, it's not, yeah, that's kind of like the effect I wanted. So, all right, that's cool. Cool, cool, cool. All right, so what about the edges now that are all jagged? Uh, what I'll do is I'll simply use mask by feature with border here. I'll invert this. I'll kind of like relax this and just like use deformation polish. There we go. I got rid of it. And now I can probably just like pull the edges like this, where it actually got maybe a bit too thin. All right, and for here, since it's kind of like thin, what I'll probably do is I'll just lasso mask this part here, so that when I pull here, it doesn't move the other side. I don't think mask uh, mask back face uh, would have worked for here since it's like a plane already. That's well, probably going to be good enough. All right. Okay, and I think I think now it's time to uh, Z remesh this. All right. So what I'll try to do is uh, I'll try to have a plane. Like you see here, I actually kept my poly groups because I actually want Z remesh to keep loops around here. Um, and I'll actually try to actually have loops. Uh, okay. Here it's uh, hidden, but uh, see, I'll try to have like a pl like a, a edge right here. So I'll assign a, another poly group here. And I'll actually assign another polygroup, oops, here, like this. All right. And now it's time to Z remesh. So you go into Z remesh, Z remesh, keep group, and let's go for, I don't know, 2000 polygons. It's probably too much. 2000 is probably too much. Yeah, it's too much. Oh, plus it kind of like, doesn't bode well for this part. Let's try again. Oh, you see how it doesn't work here? That's unfortunate. Uh, here is fine. All of that is fine. That's fine. That's actually working well here. Uh, here it, it doesn't like it, but uh, yeah. So it's probably because of the shape, because of the, the triangular shape. So I'll kind of like mask, oops. I'll kind of like mask this part and I'll try to give it like a, less of a like a triangle shape. Sometimes it helps the algorithm. And here I'm not super sure what it wants. But just by moving the shape, sometimes it kind of like resets and offers, offers something else. So let's try again. Is it remesh? Still doesn't like it. Okay, well, you know what? I will not insist then. I will just keep one polygroup here. And for this side, I will simply delete that because it's, it's, it's hidden under the whole thing. So who cares, right? So there we go. And was it remesh? Now it should be fine. Eh, you see, it's fine. Well, I mean, this triangle here isn't, it's not fine. What should I do? Hmm. I can probably just forget about like this edge and do it manually. Yeah, you know what? 
I'll stop holding, holding on to that dream. <laughs> I mean, I could just like retopo that by hand also, but uh, like I said, uh, lazy guy here, so not going to happen. See, the rest of the mesh is usable. It's pretty good. That's going to be good. I'm just going to remove that edge here. So uh, insert. If I do this, yep, yeah, here you go. I didn't lose anything else. Uh, this polygon here is a bit weird. I'm going to go and delete that. So I'll select delete. Boom. There you go. Uh, this edge here is a little bit squeezed. There you go. There's a triangle here. Does that matter? I can probably collapse it. No, not this way. Uh, no, I'll simply like add a cut right here. Um, what is it again? Split. Boom. There you go. Split. Delete, delete. There you go. All right. All right, we're good. We're good. Is so we're sure? Keep group, smooth groups might fix. Well, it's already keep groups that I have. Uh, with smooth groups. I actually haven't tried that. All right, but uh, you see, I, I'm happy with that, and uh, I know I'll be able to, to get to the results that I want with that, so we're good. Uh, I'm going to delete that poly, and I think the rest will be good. All right. So um, now that I actually have the mesh, that is pretty much my final mesh without the... It's missing the panel loop still, but... Uh, I'll actually try to really, really, really make the edges clean now. So, you'll see I'll use a, a little bit of um, an uh, automation for cleaning uh, edges soon, but uh, I still do, I always do like a little pass by hand first, just so. I really like I know what I'm going for because the automation for smoothing the edges will not like be perfect and it, it might actually smooth other part of it. So if I just like give it like a good uh, starting point, it's gonna help later. Uh, right now I'm I'm moving with AQ curve AQ curve you can find it in brush curve AQ curve. It kind of like div gives like this little pointy fall off. Otherwise, it would do like this, right? The IQ curve kind of like gives it like a, and a, I find it actually it's, it's with the move brush it creates some really cool effects. I really encourage you to to try it sometimes because uh, I really like how sometimes it just like works in smaller areas without resizing your move brush, and sometimes it's really good to create those uh, spikes, like uh, like I said. Okay. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, it's 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 kind of like a bit like snake hook. It's not the same. Uh, it, it, you'll you'll see if you try it. It kind of like first of all, snake hook is super aggressive, and it ha it kind of like drags the the model also. Whereas like this one, it really like keeps the model in place. I find it doesn't have this like dragginess to it. Don't get me wrong, I love RuPaul Drag Race, but I don't like drag in my snake hook. <laughs> Sorry, in my move IQ curve. So, also, like, like the distance between those mesh, and that's like the the problem when you start to like really separate a lot of meshes. It's that uh, the the liminal space between the meshes sometimes people forget to clean it, and it, it's true that it's kind of like annoying to have to really like make sure that like the space between the meshes is 
constant and uh, consistent and that sort of stuff. Um, so that's one of the, the reasons why for less important pieces, sometimes I just like to keep like one unified mesh, even if it's harder to polish because there's a lot of polishing by hand after. Well, that's like one positive aspect of it. It's that if you want to create like a split in the mesh, like for example, like here on the foot, like like what separates this part from this like thing here is really just a brush stroke and from afar it looks like a separation and it was really easy to do whereas like what i'm doing right there the separation between those two meshes it's kind of like annoying uh, i really have to do it by hand and um be diligent all right so now all the border of this mesh looks pretty clean, so I'll be ready to add the uh, the panel loop pretty soon. Maybe one last thing that I want to do before adding the panel loop is uh, just giving a little extra H polish, especially like here. I really want that plane to to stay. So I'm age polishing a, a low mesh. It's going to help to give good results later. If like your low mesh is looks uh, clean here, when you'll subdivide it, it's really going to give like a a clean result so uh, do not do not neglect uh, that All right. All right, let's try like this. I'll create my panel loop. So panel loop, one loop, no bevel, no polish, minus 100 iteration. Uh, elevation, sorry. And if I panel loop at this thickness value, is it the thickness I'm looking for? No, it's too thick. One could say there is no such thing as too thick. And I tend to agree. But in that case, too thick. So you see like now I have the, the thickness here, I can look around. Yeah, that's pretty good. You see, like here, it's really missing like that um, gray piece that I, I uh, that you can see on the other side. But I will actually create that gray piece from the topology of like this contour here when it's going to be uh, cleaner, and it all it's actually going to help me to go uh, much faster. So uh, there you go. All right. So now that I have the thickness, uh, is it really thick enough? Uh, I think I need it to be a little thicker. I can always change it later pretty easily also. Um, do I want to have like a bevel to this thickness? Um, no, I think I can work with that. So now what I'll do is I'll just still clean a little bit of the liminal space between. No, I don't use that as my low mesh. I always retopo uh, with uh, a, a much more optimal uh, mesh. I mean, when I when I did a few gig for the cinema uh, industry, and uh, I did uh, use my uh, lowest subdivision level for some of the clothing, and um, yeah, for some of the clothing, 
it kind of like some companies they actually work well with the uh, with automated topologies but uh, no, it's rare. Uh, some video game companies, uh, we did like uh, Chaos Masons, the, uh, we actually uh, used the Z Remesh for some of the topologies, but they were really like creatures and um, like very like, uh, yeah, whatever, I can't say too much, uh, but uh, it kind of like worked well. We just had to make sure that around like the flexion areas, that it was not too much, uh, like the loops were not like too dirty. And yeah, otherwise, uh, no, work well. Uh, okay, cool. All right, let's uh, try uh, subdivision levels now to see how it will smooth. So if I subdivide without doing anything else. So this is a subdivision without creasing. I'll probably need at least like one level of creasing. Oh crap. Uh fuck me. Fucking Christ. Uh, I forgot to sorry for the cussing right there. Um I forgot to when I did the panel loop, I forgot to click ignore group, so like now this piece is separated from the rest. Oh boy, yeah, boy. Uh, for personal pieces, I don't use Retopo. I just uh, render my high res without any optimization. Well, you see, like, uh, you know, what? I really wanted to keep that. You know what? You know what I can do? I can simply just reselect my faces, delete the thickness, and weld weld points. Yeah, they welded correctly. And now I can just like ignore group, panel, group. There we go. You see, like now it's one piece. All right. So yeah, maybe it was not worth all the cussing and stuff. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Fixed it pretty easily, eh? All right, back to smoothing. Crease one level, uh, crease poly group. So now I have like this like, yeah. And now that's the trick. The trick uh, I said, the automated polishing thing, is uh, pretty much uh, going into, uh, you'll have it in deformation, uh, polish crisp edges. It will basically like polish everything, but keep your crisp edges. But store a morph target first, because it might actually polish things that you don't want to polish. So yeah. So if I actually, uh, you see, polish crisp edges. So you see it kind of like polishes in some areas you don't want. Um, you can avoid that by adding creases also, but some places you won't be able to add creases because the topology doesn't allow for it. So you'll probably like want to keep your, uh, your, uh, so you see like if I go in morph brush, since I actually recorded morph target, I can pretty much get like that soft edge back. It's, it's a small detail, but for me, it's important. Uh, so before I actually do that, I'll just add some creases manually with uh, Z Modeler. Oops. There we go. Mm, probably won't need it there. Okay, let's see. Polish crisp edges. I mean, it's like too rounded here, but I'll just use my uh, morph brush. But you see how it actually, like, you see, like, that line, how it's cleaner now? Like those lines here are really clean. Plus it cleans a bit your surface. All right, so I'll, use, I'll keep that result. And get some of my edges back with the morph brush. Keep this part 
here. I want to keep the angle that I had. Do I want to keep something here? Yeah, this angle here. Oh, there we go. All right. That's good. I'll still move some stuff by hand. Kind of like closing the liminal space in some areas. Thanks for the following. All right. And you see, I think that this mesh is actually ready. Yeah, it's pretty much uh, final. I'll just see, what if I actually remove the crease in some areas? I'll just try something. Like adding like the roundness. I'm not sure if I really want creases here after all. Kind of like appreciate just like the general roundness of uh, this part here after all. Like it already has somewhat of a pinch because it's uh, somewhat high in poly. So yeah, I think uh, it'll be good like that. Thanks. I appreciate the compliment. All right. And now I will add the little like gray piece I was talking about here. Now that this piece is here and it's clean. Oh, this can be a little cleaner. Yeah, there you go. I'll actually use the clip brush just to make this a little bit straighter. There you go. Nice. I might, I might actually be going a bit overboard right now with uh, making it clean. I might need to relax just a little bit, but I'm having so much fun. <laughs> there you go. All right, good, 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 good. I'm actually gonna save this because I don't want to start that again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get those meshes clean. All right, I'll duplicate that mesh. Keep uh, this border edge here. I'll actually delete that. Use a uh, um, poly uh, poly group by angle, so I can actually isolate like the band here up to here there you go delete hidden so now from this piece i can pretty much just like panel loop with with elevation here and i can actually have this uh whoops There we go. And you see like this here, what I'll do is I'll probably just like use inflate polygroup all. So I can just be pretty much like choose of like the thickness of that piece here. After the fact. I think. <laughs> I appreciate that. That's uh, it's really, really nice to hear. I love uh, I love my work. It's uh, I love being an artist and uh, doing that. And uh, there's some parts that uh, I often have discussions with friends about, like some processes of like treaty that are more tedious than others. And it's kind of weird because I kind of like sometimes it can be tedious. But it's still fun. It's kind of like meditating almost. It's kind of like doing root topology once in a while. Like root topology can be like so boring, but once in a while it's kind of like just like, eh, you put a good movie and uh, you just uh, do root topology. You watch Breaking Bad for the eighth time. 
well, you reap topologize a full mechanical armor. So you see right right now what I'm trying to do is just like control the thickness so it kind of like just like works with my model. I can always like push the model the muscles a little bit more inside. I'll I'll probably need to like fill the gap here anyway by adding another muscle. But uh I'm just like working on like the curve and uh from that angle as well because you see it, it's kind of like here it's closer to the shape but like here it actually got like further and really just with the move the move brush uh I'm just going to give it like a See, like that line here is following well the other line on the side. Uh this is by the way this is a mistake that I see a lot in um uh more uh junior work let's say is um when uh the thicknesses of like an area or like where really like lines are f are going in the same direction uh often they just don't stay like the same consistency like it'll do like this where it's like the distance between here and here and the distance between here and here is like not the same and it doesn't feel like calculated or intentional so this would be something to um, to look for when you're doing like a really polished uh, pieces. And now that uh, this is the angle that I want, uh, I'll just ask myself: Is it the same? This is it the distance? Like, do I want to create like kind of like a well, this? I don't know how to call it, but just like create like an inside thickness. And yes, I want to do that just by pushing it inside like this oops so adds like a little like thickness thing and I can even like eventually add maybe like a bevel here that would be cool that would be pretty cool I will need to play with the, the muscles here because now they don't work uh, let's fix that uh, quickly muscle polygroup push them in a bit like this. There we go. And for here, I'll actually need to add a new muscle. So I'll just there we go. Perf. Oh no! Let's push that in. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's a, it's it's really um at the discretion of the artist. Uh, I find, and it's uh, really a question of calibration. Oh, I made a mistake right here. You see, I I didn't keep them on the same poly. Oh, I should have not have them on the same poly group. Ah, you know what? I think it's going to be fine. I'll just. Hmm, whatever. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So I'll just change, I'll polygroup by angle, crease the polygroups, dynamic subdivision, these here. To get the right. There we go. Nah, eh, should be fine. Those don't, those muscles here they don't like intercept with the rest the rest quite uh, perfectly, but I think it's not going to be really seen anyway, so let's just keep it like that for the moment. 
mm, there's a little like curve here in the mesh that I don't like that and now I see in that angle and I'll need to push it in like this this is like some people might never have seen this but I see it right now and uh, I'm in the mood to polish it there we go the rest might be going overboard so there we go all right. Maybe in the end I'll want this to be a little bit thicker. I don't know. I'll leave it to that for the moment. I think this piece I'll make it uh, a panel also. By the way, when it's going to be time to make like a, a bevel here, like I'll probably just end up like um, collapsing my dynamic subdivision and using the, the clay brush. Like the clay brush is really good to just like make like quick bevels like this. It even follows like the curves of the line really well. And uh, you'll just need to use like H polish after to maybe to clean it like a little bit. It's really, see? It can, might give like a nice bevel result here like this. And you can even after that, like take your smooth brush and kind of like smooth it. Like you just have to be kind of like do it one shot clean. And it kind of like gives it like this roundness after afterwards. So you really have control on the, like the corners like this uh, more than you, you could think. So uh, yeah, but I, I won't do that exactly right now because I might want there we go I might want to um, keep the keep it in like dynamic subdivision for the moment I'll probably like polish like everything one shot anyway so for the moment I'm more into like separating the pieces and cleaning them so now let's go to another piece. Or actually, you know what? I'm kind of like seeing something now. You see how like this like piece is not really aligned with like the flatness of this piece. I might actually just like see if I can just make it a little like I'm looking at like those two like details here, trying to align them to the surface. It's not following the uh, the line of the triangle either. So. Uh, Let's try to, or actually, you know what, let's try to make it more like offset to it. Maybe it's going to be better if it's really offset. So is it better straight or offset? Straight or offset? Uh, offset's better. All right. <laughs> yeah, the synthetic muscles in crisis. I know what you mean. It's it's pretty much where I I think I got my uh, my first dose of uh, inspiration for this uh, visual language. Like crisis is like only synthetic muscles almost, uh, which is whatever. It's a style. It's fine. Uh, I like it a bit more variety, um, but uh, it looks cool. I remember. I remember crisis when I played like a long time ago. I remember looking at the designs and being like, "Okay, wow! Like this is the future." And uh, I think it pioneered a certain style pretty much and uh, so like good for them it was a good game was it wait was it a good game it was a it was a nice game uh, I th think I remember it as also being a good game like having fun being like the predator going around destroyed cities and whatnot yeah kind of like I think I remember it fondly Oh, 
Oh yeah, it was a benchmarker for sure. Uh, not a benchmarker, I mean a... Uh, oh yeah, a benchmarker, yeah. Technical benchmarker. Run crisis. <laughs> yeah. I hope that that's what people said. You know, when the the guy created the computer that plays chess, I think his name was Blue, if I'm not mistaken. I wonder if people back in the day were like, "But can it run crisis?" Like, cry what? Like, sorry, I am from the future. All right, well, that's probably going to be like the shape I'm going to go for for the plan uh, for this plane. So you see, once again, I'll try to um, have like a different polygroup here. I'll make the contour less jagged just to help the uh, Z remesh algorithm. And uh, I will uh, Z remesh uh, while keeping groups. And I'm going to try 100 polys. It's a little bit low, kind of like creates weird things in some areas. So I'll just up it to like about 200. Yeah, it's fine. Good enough. There's like this. I, I hate when it does like triangles here near like a, a edge though. But it's pretty much the only one, so I'll just like fix it by hand real quick. Uh, I will fix it by removing. Oops, removing those pieces and bridging here and here like this. There you go. Fixed. And here it's a bit messy. It probably it could probably be cleaner if I just uh, do this here. Oops. It's not uh, perfect, but it'll. It's good enough for rock and roll. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Now that I have my topology, I'll just continue cleaning it. Right now it's hard to see like my liminal spaces between the meshes. Like I might actually need to um to kind of like create a thickness to really be able to see the liminal space. By the way, if you're looking for a, a fun uh a fun game that's a bit of a uh a mind twist. Uh, try super liminal. It's really cool. I had a, a lot of fun. I actually really enjoy those, um, let's call them mindfuck games. I really appreciate them. Um, I like my first mindfuck game was uh, uh, Portal, of course. After Portal, I tried Anti Chamber which was a more of a indie game. It was also like pretty much my introduction, my introduction into mini games, uh, indie games, sorry. I really have an appreciation for those. Back in the day, there was a podcast called Idle Thumbs where like they were talking often about uh, indie games and uh, I tried a good couple of them. And uh, other mindfuck game that I played uh, after that I really liked, I think my, to be honest, my favorite one is probably uh, the Stanley Parable. Uh, I tried to have my dad play the Stanley Parable, and he got so frustrated with the nar narrator. And I was like, oh, there you go. That's pretty much the point of the game. Making you quit the game. <laughs> uh, I love that game. So, yeah, Super Liminal is... Because I, I keep saying Liminal... Uh, by the way, just just to define the word liminal, um, like liminal space 
is basically like the corridors in your house. So like the rooms of your house that are used as transitional spaces between the main spaces. So let's say like your living room is in like an official space of your house, right? But like, let's say like the corridor that could lead, lead from your like kitchen to your living room, that would be like, this corridor would be a liminal space. It's a space where people don't live, like people don't like are, don't exist really. Like you never really stay in a corridor except if you're a creep. Or, I mean, that's kind of, like, judgmental. I was just, I'm just thinking of, like, horror movies when you see, like, shad, like shadowy figures in the corridors and stuff. That's what I meant. I felt meant to be... No, I didn't want it to be so judgmental. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, liminal is just, like... It, it, mean, it kind of, like, means, like, in between, let's say. So, the liminal space between the, um... My meshes is pretty much, like what I was talking about earlier. Sorry, I just noticed something here. So yeah, super liminal, really fun, really fun uh, mindfuck game. Yeah, I make a game to, <laughs> exactly. What is the tallest 3D printed model that I made? Well, I mean, if you're talking about the models that I made myself, uh, just give me a sec. With my own printer. <laughs> Alright, so, I mean, it might be kind of, like, hard to to zoom in this character, but uh, I printed, like, this guy here. Um, with my uh, my form, too. It's kind of, like, hard to see, you know. My, the, the, my screen is in the, in the way. But uh, you can see, like the size is pretty, is pretty huge. And since I, like, I'm printing with a form two, so it makes for like some pretty uh, high quality uh, renders. So uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's. Uh, I really like that printer. It's really good. It's kind of like a bit of a hassle to use, but uh, yeah. But when I do, when I do prints for um, to sell to people, I always uh, use a manufacturer to print them for me and ship ship them. Uh, that print is uh, pretty much hollowed. I always hollow my pieces as much as I can because it saves on on resin. But I think that my man my manufacturers, when they print, uh, they they don't even bother with like uh, hollowing the the things because it just like takes more time to execute and print, and it creates uh, issues with the molds, like and stuff. Like I I don't know. Like I'm assuming. From the few discussions that I had with my manufacturer, uh, this is what I assumed. So we're close to the two hour mark. I'm, uh, baby seems to be still sleeping well. I'm not sure how much longer I'm going to to do this, but uh, I kind of feel like continuing a little bit still. I mean, worst case scenario, I'll just like abruptly end the stream and continue another time. No problem. I have the television playing in the living room and it's really like play, uh, it's confusing me cause I kind of like hear sounds and stuff. And now that I talked about spooky liminal places, I'm all scared.
should probably stop to be sarcastic. I don't know if you've seen the South Park episode where Stan, uh, Randy, Stan's dad, just cannot stop being sarcastic and it just like pretty much like <laughs> brings his own demise. It's a good one. It's like a stupid episode, but it's a, it's a really good one. All right, let's uh, let's panel loop. Oops, too thick. Just about right. See here, the uh, the thicknesses don't really line up. I think I'm gonna have to think about uh, something here. It kind of like bothers me. It feels like it was not manufactured correctly. Okay. So you like you see like how like this thickness here is like not consistent here. This is the kind of stuff that uh, I say like bothers me sometimes. I just feel it, it, it just like it looks un not polished when this happens. Uh, sometimes you can hide it, especially if like it's not an area that people will look a lot. But um, yeah, I try to I try to keep those cleans normally. I'm just smoothing this here. There you go, and I mean, I'm pro, pro, I will probably add some details around the, like the these edges uh, at some point. It's gonna help to make them look uh, look cleaner too. This is really some like high level pickiness mm, but it's kind of important for me all right should be all right Ah, another panel in the bag. So I'll have to work something. Um, like uh, between these here. There's go I'm going to need to add like an inner mesh at some point. It's probably going to be like a really rough mesh. Probably I'm going to use like this under mesh here. Just to fill the holes a little bit here. Because it's... Uh, I don't want to have the, like negative space there. And uh, also what I'll probably do later is, uh, like you see how like this kind of like, it's kind of like covered by here. Uh, to be honest, like I might uh, do something pretty radical at some point and uh, 
once I'm going to apply subdivision, I might try to kind of like, maybe by Boolean, maybe by just like clipping, I might actually try to, I might add like this kind of like whole thing here. I'll just have to find the right angle for it. Yeah. Just so that there's like uh, the continuation of like that hole here, like this. And you see that the back is pretty dirty now because it's clipped, but the reality is that if you actually just use back face, you can just like recreate pretty much like your lost thickness. It's not really nice. The topology is all like effed up, but uh, um, I mean, it's not really, you're, we're not really, really going to notice. So uh, yeah. This is something I might actually do later, but like I said for no moment, pretty much just working on having all my my meshes clean. Oop, I need a crease here. Thanks for uh, sticking around, by the way. It's uh, it's pretty fun to know that there's uh, people with me right now. I felt that right now also I kind of like uh, found a good groove. So it's fun to keep it rolling while there's people around. It's coming along, eh? Like, what, once I'll be done with the rest of the pieces here, that's when I will probably start to add, like, all the trim details, and that's all that that good stuff here. This was, like, all done by hand, like I said, and this is more, like, done in a very, more of, like, a tedious manner with the loop, the panels and stuff. But it's relatively more of the same sometimes. You see, like, I think for this piece, I'll just make it like a, like a solid piece, just to say that I, I did that piece in a, in another manner, in another way, I mean. So, uh, I'll actually split it. Also, I kind of like feel confident that I can get get rid of that piece. I'll just actually I'll put it in my keepers here. Sometimes I keep pieces that I think I might reuse later. All right, well, take care, Alex. Have a good one. See you soon. Yeah, so that mesh here, I don't need like all this part here, so I'll just uh, scratch it. Alright, so now you will see me work how I work uh, dirt, quick and dirty. Alright. You're going to see it's not as technical, but it requires more and polishing. Um, 
All right, so I'll take this mesh here and I'll actually just close hole it. And uh, yeah, no, this mesh should have have Yeah, that's just to help myself. Actually, you know what? I'll do it in a bit of an unorthodox manner. But I'll close the gap like this. And I will actually subdivide, uh, dynamesh it. So you see it's like really, like, it's not as graceful as like the other technique. And I'll just like by hand. By hand, I'll just uh, make it just somewhat of a cleaner mesh. When I have a couple of uh, clean pieces laying around, sometimes I'll just um, make the other ones around it in a uh, less of a uh, like I'll be just like um, less strict about like how clean. I am because they're not like the pieces that attract the most attention and like this is pretty much like a good example like this small like piece here so you know what as long as it kind of like looks good to the eye oh and by the way I'll, I'll probably add like an IMM right here you know what I'll do it right now I think I have one right here it's probably like a cylinder or something uh, Uh, no, I think there's there's one on the leg of that guy though. Or is it just the one that's called cylinder? No, that's not it. That is not it. All right, ciao, Elman. See you soon. There's the cylinder I was talking about. I'll probably use it with like a cable as well. Let's grab that cable right now. Thank you. Much appreciated.
Yeah, let's try it like this. Or maybe a little bit more. There you go, something like that. 